electric force on one plate of a capacitor due to other. Here we have a parallel plate capacitor. Plate 1 has charge density plus sigma and plate 2 has charge density minus sigma. Electric field on the surface of plate 1 due to plate 2 is E is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. The direction of E will be perpendicularly inward for plate 2 because it is negatively charged. This plate is negatively charged. Now if the charge on point P is dQ then force on it is given by dF is equal to E into dQ. The direction of this force will be along the direction of electric field because here dQ is positive in nature. If dA is the elementary area of plate 1 at point P then we can write dQ is equal to dQ is equal to sigma dA therefore the value of dF will be dF is equal to E into sigma dA as E is sigma upon 2 epsilon naught so here is sigma upon 2 epsilon naught into sigma into dA. Now net force on plate 1 due to plate 2 will be F is equal to integration of sigma square sigma into sigma is sigma square upon 2 epsilon naught into dA. It will be equal to sigma square upon 2 epsilon naught epsilon naught is constant sigma square is also constant sigma square upon 2 epsilon naught into integration of dA. The integration of dA is the total area surface area of plate 1. So it will be equal to sigma square upon 2 epsilon naught into total surface area of plate 1. This implies F will be equal to sigma square upon 2 epsilon naught into A. Since the direction of this force is along electric field vector E that is towards plate 2. So we can say that plate 2 is attracting the plate 1 by this force. Similarly plate 1 is also attracting plate 2 by this force. As sigma is equal to Q upon A so we can write F is equal to Q upon A whole square into A upon 2 epsilon naught. It will be equal to Q square upon 2 epsilon naught A implies q is equal to f uh, f is equal to q square upon 2 epsilon naught a so force of attraction on one plate due to other is this this is the force of attraction on one plate due to other this is the force of attraction dielectric breakdown Suppose we have a capacitor filled with a dielectric medium. Now if we increase the potential difference between the plates, a limiting value of potential difference comes when dielectric medium starts ionizing and permits conduction through it. This phenomenon is called dielectric breakdown. So we can write when a dielectric is subjected to a sufficiently large electric field it experiences a partial ionization that permits conduction through it. This phenomenon is called dielectric breakdown. Now dielectric strength. It is the maximum electric field magnitude that a material can withstand without the occurrence of breakdown. 
डाई इलेक्ट्रिक स्ट्रेंथ इज एफेक्टेड सिग्निफिकेंटली बाय टेम्परेचर ट्रेस इम्प्योरिटीज स्मॉल इरेगुलरिटीज इन द मेटर इलेक्ट्रोड्स एंड अदर फैक्टर्स दैट आर डिफिकल्ट टू कंट्रोल फॉर दिस रीजन अप्रॉक्सीमेट फिगर्स फॉर डाई इलेक्ट्रिक स्ट्रेंथ द डाई इलेक्ट्रिक स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ अ ड्राई एयर इज अबाउट थ्री इंटू टेन पावर सिक्स वोल्ट पर मीटर दिस टेबल गिव द डाई इलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट एंड डाई इलेक्ट्रिक स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ सम इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल्स फोर्स ऑन अ डाई इलेक्ट्रिक इन अ कैपेसिटर इन फिगर वी हैव अ चार्ज कैपेसिटर नियर द एंडस ऑफ प्लेट्स इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर कर् दिस फील्ड इज कॉल्ड फ्रिंजिंग फील्ड suppose in this fringing field we place a dielectric slab then due to induction a negative induced charge this is negative induced charge negative induced charge this is negative induced charge is produced near the positively charged plate and a positive induced charge is produced near the negatively charged plate these are induced charges now consider two points a and b on this slab the charge at point a is negative it is negative induced charge and this is positive induced charge the direction of electric field external electric field is this this is the direction of electric field so the force on negative charge will be opposite to this external electric field uh, and we represented this force by f minus i and the direction of electric force on this induced charge b is along the electric field line now this force fi has two components one component is this and other component is parallel to the plate one component is perpendicular to the plate and other is parallel to the plate and inward to the capacitor and here the component one component is perpendicularly outward to the capacitor and other component is parallel to the capacitor since the amount of induced charges at point a points a and b are equal so this component get cancelled with this component and there will be a net inward force which pulls the dielectric slab inside the inside this capacitor so we can say that there is a net pulling force on the slab due to fringing field now we will calculate the net net pulling force on the slab due to these fringing fields now we will find the force on dielectric slab under two conditions in first case when the battery remains connected and in the second case when the battery is disconnected let l is the length and b is the width of capacitor support suppose at any instant x is the portion of dielectric slab inside the capacitor and uh, the capacitance of this portion is c1 and suppose the capacitance of remaining part is c2 so we can consider the whole system as a parallel combination of two capacitors of capacitance c1 and c2 the length of uh, the part under uh, part this part is x and the remaining part will be l minus x this is the length of remaining part of capacitor so capacitance of uh, this part having dielectric constant k is equal to c1 is equal to epsilon not k into area of this part of capacitor area will be equal to length x into width b b is the width upon separation between the plates it is d and the capacitance of remaining part will be equal to c2 is equal to 
epsilon naught into area area will be equal to l minus x length it is l minus x into width b upon separation as c1 and c2 are connected in parallel so net capacitance will be equal to c is equal to c1 plus c2 c1 plus c2 epsilon naught b upon d is common epsilon naught b upon d is common so we can write it as epsilon naught b upon d is common so here will be kx plus epsilon naught b upon d is common so here the quantity will be l minus x the value of k is greater than 1 so c will be equal to this now potential energy of the system is u is equal to half cv square so it will be equal to 1 upon 2 epsilon naught b upon d into l plus x k minus 1 into v square therefore force on the dielectric slab is equal to minus du upon dx it will be equal to now force on dielectric slab is equal to minus du upon dx is equal to minus d upon dx half cv square as v is constant because the slab because the capacitor is connected with battery so we can write 1 upon 2 c sorry 1 upon 2 v square outside this differentiation and d upon dx of c so the force will be equal to minus 1 upon 2 v square dc upon dx this is the force on dielectric slab negative sign shows that the force is attractive in nature the magnitude of force is magnitude of force is 1 upon 2 v square dc upon dx this is the force on dielectric slab now if we put the value of c here we get f is equal to 1 upon 2 v square d upon dx value of c is epsilon naught b upon d into l plus x k minus 1 this is the value of c it will be equal to 1 upon 2 v square epsilon naught b upon d as l is constant so its differentiation is 0 plus differentiation of x with respect to x is 1 the value will be equal to k minus 1 here it is equal to 1 upon 2 epsilon naught b v square upon d into k minus 1 so this is the force on dielectric slab now case second when battery is disconnected after charging the capacitor in this case q will be constant and the value of potential energy will be equal to half q square upon c on substituting the value of c we get this value as a potential energy of the system and the force on the system is the force on dielectric slab is defined as f is equal to minus d upon dx which will be equal to this and on simplification this value we get force as this